What's a computer cluster? Well, this is. Uh, there's a rack or several racks about two meters high and each of these little boxes you see here is a computer. There's no screens or keyboards or mice, but other than that they're a lot like the computer I'm recording this on and maybe like the one you're watching this on. And that's an important point about cluster. The individual computers in it are not necessarily special. The main thing is that there are a lot of them. To explain how this works, let me show you some diagrams. Here's that rack of computers again from the last picture. We give them unbelievably creative names like CL001, 002, and so on. We usually call these nodes, but sometimes we call them hosts or machines. They don't have keyboards or monitors, but they are all wired together. The wiring, or the interconnect as we call it, might be something fairly conventional like Ethernet, or it might be something more expensive and higher performing like InfiniBand. One node is special. We call it the head node or the login node, and it's the only one that's directly connected to the outside world, the internet. Some clusters might have two or three or even more login nodes, depending on how big the cluster is and how many users they have to serve, but the point is that most of the nodes in the cluster are not directly on the internet. Another thing connected to this internal network is storage. Each of the compute nodes, 001, 002, all that, might have its own hard disk, but it doesn't get a lot of use. Most of the storage in a typical cluster is in what we call a storage array, or networked storage. Now we're getting close to the point of a cluster as a shared resource. Your calculations are not, mostly, going to happen on the head node, because there might be anywhere from 4 to 40 users logged into the head node at one time, and if everyone ran their calculations on the head node, it would crash, or it would go slow, and all these other nodes would be sitting there doing nothing. Your calculations are going to happen on these other compute nodes, somewhere. And your calculations will need some files. They need the program, the input data, some place to put the output. In a cluster, things are set up so that when you log into the head node, the files you see are all on the storage array. And when your calculation starts on one of these other nodes, it will see exactly the same files on the storage array. The head node and the compute nodes all refer to the storage array for their most important files. Put another way, each compute node has access to an identical set of programs and data files, and so to a first approximation, it doesn't matter where your calculations run. Any of these is fine. So, how do you decide where to run your program then? Let me tell you a story. Back in the early 2000s, when I first worked on a cluster, we had three people in the lab group that were using it. In order to make sure that we weren't all running our code in the same node at the same time, all I had to do was call across the office divider, Hey Jeff, what nodes are you using today? And Jeff would say, 1, 2, and 3. And I'd be like, great, I'll use 4, 5, 6, and 7. Well, this isn't a bad system for two or maybe three people, but I think you can appreciate that as soon as you have four or five, or as soon as they're not all in the same office, it begins to break down. So instead of shouting across office dividers, what we have is a specialized piece of software called a dynamic resource manager. Except dynamic resource manager has too many syllables for most people, so mostly we call it a scheduler. The specific scheduler we happen to run at AceNet is called Grid Engine, but at other sites you might run into schedulers like Torque, OpenPBS, or Slurm, just to name a few. What you do is you make up a little job script that says what program you want to run, where to find the input, and where to put the output, and you submit that script to the scheduler. Then the scheduler decides, oh, maybe SEAL004 isn't busy and I'll run it there. Or maybe it decides everything is busy and I'll save it until some node becomes idle, and then start it. And it'll do this seven days a week, day and night. You can submit a job right now, you could submit a hundred jobs right now, and some of them might start away, and some of them might not start until the wee hours of the morning or later, but the scheduler will look after that even if you're sound asleep or doing something else. And the results of your calculations will appear on the output files on the storage array, in the places you mentioned in your job script. And when all your jobs have run, you can log into the head node and download the results back to your personal computer. And you're done.